So another thing I'm gonna do with this pork loin that was only $11.57, um, I wanna show you, it started out kinda of big like this, right? And what I did on that end was I cut down, let's see, five good looking lean little pork steaks or pork loin that I can do a lot of different things with. This I'm gonna put in a crock pot with sauerkraut and make that so that's two meals. Then the third thing, I took this electric knife and very carefully went like this, Cur, you know, I won't turn around because it's loud. I went like this on this side and then I turned it around, did the other side. So what I, the idea is I'm going to not just butterfly it, but I'm gonna flip this over now. Look how nice and lean that is, you know? And then flip it like this and continue this. This is the kind of fatty side. And I left this fat cap on because we're gonna make good gravy with that, okay? So I'm gonna go around and around and around and I'll show it to you when I'm done. I'm not a butcher and the butcher can do this for you, but I found that it goes really fast with this bugger. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, that just took me, honestly, I'd say about two minutes um, because I used an electric knife. I've done it before with just a sharp knife too. Um, you sharpen it with a, a steel or if you have one of these, you can do that. Okay, so anyway, look what I'm gonna do with this. Can you guess? Let me show you, ready? Da, da, da. I always have uh, music. <laughs> I just kept on, you know, rolling it and unrolling it until it looks like this. Now, I'm gonna have to flatten out this middle part a little bit. It's a little thicker than the rest, okay? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stuff this and then roll it up, okay? And then tie it up. I'm, I could use traditional stuffing. I think I'm gonna make this for my sister's family. Um, or you can use any kind of stuffing you want, um, but you just tie it up or wrap it real tight in foil and bake it. And then it's so pretty when it gets cut in these pinwheels like this, look. Ta-da. I'm gonna show you the end. So can you imagine that and stuffed, right? It's a little bit more fancy than uh, just a regular pork roast for sure. But if it's a special occasion, like um, a nice dinner party or, you know, try it for your family first. But like I said, this whole thing, $11.57 for all of this lean meat. Okay, and I'll, I, maybe I'll do a picture at the end of what, the, um, what it looks like. Thanks. I was gonna flatten out this middle part. So instead of just using plastic wrap or something, this is a little, little bit thicker mill. So I'm gonna do this and just give it a good pound. You don't need to hear that, but I just wanted to show you what I do next. So I'm to this part. You saw me have the stuffing laid out and I rolled it up with the fat side on the outside so that when it heats up and melts, um, it goes down into the pan. Okay, um, I'm not a professional. I've never seen, you know, when I started cooking, there weren't videos and Food Network and everything. I relied on what I knew and just instincts and stuff. So this may not be correct how I tie this bugger up, but it's the way I do it and it works. So um, the first thing I did was I just got some twine from the garage. <laughs> and the first one, I tied it tight, just in a knot. Okay, so now watch what I do. I take this part and I, I'm gonna put it underneath. So I gotta lift this little guy up a little bit, okay? Hey, if some stuffing comes out, that's the way it goes, right? So I put it underneath, okay, do you see that? Now I'm gonna take this and put it under here, like that, okay, the whole thing. And then I'm gonna go like this and pull it back. See that? Okay, and I'm gonna do it again. So hold my finger there maybe a little bit. Pick you up. This is to hopefully keep the stuffing in and keep it nice and tight around the horn. And remember what I do now, I push this underneath here. Okay. Push it all the way under, pull it back. See that? And I'm gonna do this again. 
Maybe just one more. <clears throat> Come here. Stuffing wants to jump out. But you know those little bits that fall out, the little celery, the little onion, little bits of sage. Ooh, I, I mean, I have just enough twine. That will make for a nice gravy. So now look at that, see? And I'm gonna put it under here again. I never know what I'm gonna do until I do it, like tie in knots. But I just wanna make sure that it's pretty tight. So that seems like it'll stay together. Let me tie it. Get over there. I'm gonna put it through a little bit like this. Couldn't hoit, because of course you'll take that off when it's time. I'm gonna tuck this under too, okay? Tuck that under and down. What's that end look like? Can you see that? There's stuffing in there. And what's this end look like? Let me turn it around without trying to mess it up too much. Okay? The, the first pieces are always kind of ugly. So you keep those like that. And then you, if you have in company, that is. And then you serve it as such. Let me show you my pan that I'm going to use. <sighs> My son Jordan bought this for me a long time ago. It's a nice all clad one. If you do not have one of these inserts, no big deal, okay? Um, say you just had one of those aluminum pans. I would use two together because with the, with the broth and everything, it gets pretty heavy. Um, but what I do is, if you do have something like this, spray it with nonstick spray first, and then you can put your little roast guy on there your roast beast this time of year and um, if you just have a pan like this I also a little spray the bottom at least and then I do some uh, water you can use broth if you want but this is going to render and, and make a nice nice broth so and I'm going to have my oven on pretty high at first anytime you're roasting a turkey or whatever you want to brown things first on high then turn them down and cook because you want to cook the outside super fast and go from there. So, okay, I'm going to get this going. I don't want to make this too long. Okay, guys, but I want to show you how I, I tie that up. I forgot to mention something. If you don't have one of these little racks that lifts it above any of the water that I put in the bottom because that's going to be my broth. I put a couple good uh, glasses of water in the bottom, but it's not touching yet. Okay, so if um, you don't have this little rack insert what I've done for any kind of chicken or whatever so that it's not touching the bottom is I've taken a couple pieces of celery the stalks no I didn't wash the shit but this is just for demo okay it'll flavor your broth first of all but what you, you do is you put it in the bottom of the pan and then your protein your meat will rest on top of it and it'll just keep it above just enough that um, you know the juices will run down still and it won't be boiling uh, or, or whatever in the bottom with the water. So I sprayed the whole thing with uh, cooking spray and I put a little bit of olive oil on. I have that oven at 500 and I'm gonna just stick it in there. After that, I'll lower it down and then tent it with some foil. I also spray this on the bottom of the foil. Pretend like this is the foil I'm putting over. So if it touches the top, it doesn't stick and pull off the skin, say, on your turkey or your chicken, like that. So I always spray the bottom of my foil and then tent it over. Okay, that's enough of that. I'll be back. Okay, I checked the internal temperature. It was like 180, 185 with stuffing. And um, I forgot to mention... I had it at 500 just for like, mm, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. And then without opening the oven, I just um, turned it down, went and got my aluminum foil to tent it, you know, to put it over top. And let me turn down these potatoes. And then um, when it was finished, I don't know how long it took. I really don't because it was on pretty low. I put it on about 350. Your oven might be a little different, but anyway, I let it rest, okay? You should always, you know, keep the foil on. Just let it rest before you cut into something. Because if you do cut in too early, any juice and moisture that's in there is just going to run out, okay? People make that mistake a lot with their steaks. I understand why, but just don't do it. So I'm going to come over here and cut this off. 
and hopefully it'll all stay together when I do unwrap our little package here. Like I said, and it's just a regular dinner for me and Thane. Um, he bought celery, I bought celery, we had too much celery, and I had this nice little pork roast, so I thought I'd just make it, oopsie, I better go the other way and get that rope off, huh? Because the stuffing wants to jump out. Those little pieces will be mine. Okay, let me throw that away. Now, the first ones are ugly on the side, right? <laughs> they taste good, but they're ugly. Let me see. I'm going to just cut that off. Well, it's still really pretty. It's kind of hot, but I'm going to come to the camera to show you, okay? Yike. Can you see that? Look how pretty that looks, huh? Hey, this ugly one even looks pretty. So I don't want to cut it um, down too much right now. Thane will be home shortly. And I have the gravy going. Should I show you my gravy? Um, well, you've seen gravy before. <laughs> but it made a lovely gravy, just saying. So we will cut that with an electric knife because it just works a little better. If not, you can use a serrated knife. All these electric knives are serrated and that's for a good reason. They cut bread better and um, certain meats. Okay, don't ever mean to be too long. I just need want to be thorough. Okay, there you go.